Hey guys, Ibra here with Hardware Connects and uh, we're always on the lookout for some cool things that come across our inbox. And if they're inexpensive, bonus points towards them because we'd like to cover as much as possible here on the channel. Now, we received a press release from Philips a while back regarding their uh, inexpensive E lineup of monitors. And we thought to ourselves, would it be possible to build a triple monitor setup uh, that's relatively inexpensive, but doesn't actually sacrifice on picture quality, yet it also gives you an amazing gaming experience. Well, we decided to take the plunge, and as you can see, I have three boxes behind me, and this is my first time building a triple monitor setup, so I'm super excited about that. And yeah, let's just, you know, fingers crossed, let's hope everything works well. So let's find out if this is even possible, and if it's even worth it, right after this. The legendary Hyper 212 CPU cooler from Cooler Master now comes in this breathtaking matte black finish. The included Silencio 120mm fan delivers great airflow and reduced noise, plus you can pick up an RGB version of this cooler as well. Learn more about the Hyper 212 Black Edition and its RGB sibling down below. All right, so the main highlight of the video is the Philips 276E9 QDSB monitor. And we got this idea because of what Philips actually claims its panels can accomplish. So let's get the good stuff out of the way. This is a true IPS display rather than being, you know, IPS equivalent stuff that we've been seeing with other panels. So that actually checks off a big number of must have points for a triple monitor setup because viewing angles should be uh, or is an important factor for the setup. Also, did I mention that the price per monitor is around $165? That is impressive, my friends. You can also pick them up in 24 inches for around $130 or the 21 and a half inch model that goes for around $100. Though keep in mind that the 21 and a half inch model seems to sell out a lot. Another cool feature about this monitor is that it's basic compatible in the 100 by 100 millimeter configuration. So you could end up picking up an inexpensive compatible um, you know, monitor arm from Amazon or something like that and have you know complete flexibility. Links to all of these will be down in the description. Cable routing options are pretty limited on this panel, so you kind of have to find your own way to do that uh, within your desk setup. The rest of the specs include a refresh rate of 75 hertz with support for FreeSync. It also has a five millisecond greater response time, so that's adequate enough for casual gaming. But this also brings us to the bad stuff where the lower price comes into effect. The FreeSync range is around 48 to 76 hertz and it's only 1080p across 27 inches. So the pixel density is gonna be a lot lower and that's something to keep note of. Some other cost cutting factors include the design and the build quality. So the back panel is completely crafted out of this cheap piano gloss plastic construction that attracts fingerprints like no one's business. The monitor stand is built pretty well. I mean, it's a metal base with a plastic shroud on top of it, so it's pretty solid. Uh, the ports are conveniently placed at the back instead of being at the bottom. And as for ports, you get dueling DVI, HDMI, and VGA, as well as audio out and power in. Now that means, the FreeSync signal can only be delivered over HDMI since there's no display port. Now, in terms of picture quality, I was actually amazed at how well a monitor that costs less than $200 can produce amazing colors. So first and foremost, the viewing angles are amazing for what it is. You're really getting an awesome experience when watching content or just gaming in particular. Uh, the contrast ratios are just perfect. The only thing I did notice is that it, the monitor doesn't get too bright. Uh, in terms of backlit bleed, I was not able to notice anything with my naked eye. And as you can see, with the triple monitor setup, I set the ISO all the way up to 10,000, and that's when I started picking up a few things, uh, you know, started picking up backlit bleed around the edges. I should also mention 1080p at 27 inches was certainly an interesting experience for me personally because I come from a 4K monitor at 32 inches. So pixel density is certainly a lot lower. Uh, and if you're coming from a 4K panel, then this is definitely a downgrade for you personally. But I think if you're thinking of expanding your laptop set to something with an external monitor, then this would be a fantastic solution or an add-on to your setup that doesn't really cost that much. All right, so with that out of the way, I think it's time to build this setup. I actually did unbox one uh, monitor just to test it out and stuff. But now it's time to build the triple monitor setup, so let's get to it. All right guys, so I've run into a little bit of an issue here with setting up these three monitors. So one of the things to consider with the Philips E-Line is that they don't feature height adjust or even swivel, so you kind of have to. You're kind of stuck with either um, tilt, and that's pretty much it. Now the problem is 
that none of these monitors are consistent in terms of height. So for example, you can see that there's a little bit of a clearance, not a clearance, but this monitor on the left side is quite higher uh, as opposed to the one in the middle. And when you look at the one we at the right, on the right hand side, it's even uh, shorter. So um, yeah, this is, this is gonna be quite challenging, but uh, let's, uh, let's set up the rest. Guys, as you can see, the triple monitor setup is complete and it's sitting right behind me. So tempting for me to actually go right now and play Dirt 3, but uh, I just I just have to finish this video. So uh, let me walk you through some of the issues that I did run into. First and foremost, I do wanna talk about cable management because triple monitor setup is all great and all, but managing cables is definitely something to consider. You might be able to see, notice that little cable in the background. Well, that's because the power supply isn't built into the monitor. So it acts actually an external unit, which is another thing to cable manage. I actually ended up taping some of the panels or some of the cables behind the monitor. Um, I really don't want to show it on camera because it's too embarrassing. I mean, it looks okay right now, but uh, cable management is definitely something to consider. Now, another thing that I should definitely mention is the port situation because this monitor, or I guess these monitors come with a single HDMI port that supports FreeSync, and that's the only way to get this whole thing working. Unfortunately, most modern graphics cards only come with a single HDMI port. So the only other option we had left was to use passive DisplayPort to HDMI adapters that I had lying around the studio. The issue is that when you use adapters like that, the refresh rate caps at 60 Hertz. It still supports free sync, but you could pick up an active adapter that will allow for 75 Hertz operation and we'll leave links to some of them. But anyways, I ended up setting all three, three panels to 60 Hertz, uh, which also caps the uh, free sync range as well. So playing 60 Hertz at triple monitors is, I mean, I know it is eyesoring for some of you guys who are used to 144 Hertz, but honestly, I loved it. And not to mention the minimal bezels on these panels uh, really is perfect for a triple monitor setup because it's less distracting when you're gaming on it and when you're doing productivity things like dragging a window from one panel to the other, it's just so seamless and that bezels or those bezels weren't really distracting to me at all. Except for the fact that the height difference between one panel to the other was definitely different and the lack of height adjust and tilt adjust is certainly something to keep note of. Uh, and that's where I would recommend picking up a third party triple monitor arm from Amazon. I think I found this one for $110, which seems to have amazing reviews. So if you're planning on setting up a triple monitor setup, you should definitely consider picking up a stand so that it's all unified and you can you know, get things like height adjust, swivel, tilt, and all that kind of stuff. All right, so with that out of the way, how was it actually gaming on a triple monitor setup? Honestly, guys, it was breathtaking. But before I get into the whole experience and whatnot, I just wanna quickly talk about the setup process. So AMD's drivers actually include something called iFinity, and it's been around for quite some time. So uh, I just head over to that tab and I hit quick setup, and essentially what it did, it had stitched all three monitors together to create this one you know, widescreen resolution. So I get 5760 by 1080, and so that means all your windows would span across all three screens uh, if you go full screen mode. So if I open up Chrome and if I maximize the window, it just spans across all three windows, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. Now, just to go over the specs of the PC powering this entire setup, I have a Ryzen 5 2600X with 16 gigs of RAM and an AMD GPU, which I'll talk about in another video. The good thing is that I did not experience any driver crashes whatsoever for once, which is kind of awesome, especially since this is an all AMD themed setup. So I'm really, uh, grateful for that. There's also one thing that I highly need to emphasize and that is game support because uh, Overwatch for some reason does not support triple monitors uh, and uh, there are also a few other titles as well. So if you're planning on building a triple monitor setup, certainly look at uh, the games you play and if they support triple monitors because that is highly important if you're actually going for this in the first place. But I ended up trying a few titles like Battlefield 1. I also tried Dirt, Showdown, and of course Fortnite and uh, Rocket League, obviously, because all of these games support multiple screens and boy oh boy, the experience was fabulous. I'm gonna kick things off with Battlefield 1 because the whole field of view when you're playing an FPS title, it just immerses you in the game and you can sort of spot your enemies uh, in a better way uh, and that's kind of amazing when you're just 
is cruising through a certain situation, especially playing team that match and whatnot. It's kind of cool to just, you know, blow up stuff and uh, just, it just immerses you into the whole experience. Now, when you're playing racing titles like Dirt Showdown, it's even awesome because it just immerses you into the experience. So um, in conclusion, this triple monitor setup project turned out to be a success. I think the obvious down or drawback was would obviously be the fact that we were only able to set these three monitors at 60 hertz and not 75 hertz. And the fact that you're getting, you know, all of these triple monitors for around $500 is kind of awesome. Actually coming to think of it, I just realized that you kind of have to spend even more to get the display port to active, uh, the active display port to HDMI adapters and uh, all the cables and whatnot, which would cost you at least, you know, 50 to $100 extra, because I'm telling you, these monitors don't come with an HDMI cable. That is something that I had to highly emphasize because it's kind of the cost cutting factor of spending $170 on a panel like this. It only comes with a VGA cable, which is kind of stupid, but and not to mention you're getting true IPS technology and that's awesome, especially for a monitor that costs $170, viewing angles, they're all great. You really won't have a terrible time setting at least three of these in surround mode because it just is, it is an awesome experience, guys. You just have to take my word for it. By the way, links to the monitors, cables, everything in the setup will be down in the description. It does help out the channel. Thank you very much. But yeah, that's about it, guys. Let me know what you guys think about this triple monitor setup. You know, uh, would you consider building yourself something like this? Uh, and also considering that this thing costs, now that it costs around $600 of the cables and adapters included, um, you know, would you consider uh, recommending this to a friend of yours? And if you're currently rocking a triple monitor setup, um, let me know in the comments down below what your experience is like and what your setup is exactly. I'd love to go over that in the comments. I'm Ewer with Hardware Connects. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure to check out some relevant content over here. Subscribe to our Boot Sequence channel. I'm signing off and I'll see you guys in the next one.